Hello, Hot Chats, Jess with Emotional Fire Academy. Today to talk about highly sensitive person breakup relief. So if you are suffering a breakup, this is an excellent video for you. Let's get you some tools and tricks to make it through like a champ. So subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every week about what it's like to be a highly sensitive person. And who am I? I am Jess. I am an emotional engineer, former firefighter, and I am here to share some really awesome stuff with you today. Got my blues on, if you'll notice. So yeah, let's dive right in. So, um, and you should really take this from me because I used to be a bad breaker upper. Uh, it would take me months, if not years, to get over people as a highly sensitive person. I thought it was just an effect of my emotionality, but now looking back and what I've learned about emotions, I was actually making some really critical mistakes in the breakup process, and I want to help you avoid those mistakes. So let's get right to it. Um, and make sure you stay tuned to the end because this stuff is going to help you, especially if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, it is really going to help you. Because using these tools, I was able to walk away from a narcissist, an eight-year relationship with a narcissist, essentially in like a day, which sounds impossible, but it's totally, totally within your reach. So, um, realize that, okay, this is the first overarching thing I want you to know. If you're going through a breakup right now, it's going to feel like, um, a withdrawal process because it is essentially when we love someone and when we have uh, codependent tendencies or we're really not taking care of ourselves as much as we should, we develop a neurochemical addiction to the person we're with, right? It's all about dopamine. We get, when we anticipate seeing this person or spending time with this person, we get a little hit, hit of dopamine. And so your brain, and your body are to some degree addicted to this person. So expect that you are going to go through something that feels like a withdrawal because that's what it is, especially for highly sensitive people. Our neurochemical systems are very sensitive just like all the rest of our systems. And so it's easy for us to develop addictions, especially to emotions or to um, the emotional hit that we get from someone. So keep that in mind as you're going through this. So be gentle with yourself, right? This is a withdrawal. And obviously the first five days are gonna be the hardest of any withdrawal, right? That's when your body is really detoxing and trying to get this this person out of your system and reset the chemicals, right? You're establishing a new normal for yourself. So be patient with yourself. And um, you're gonna feel a mixture of emotions, you know, sadness, loneliness, anger, frustration, irritability, you might have problems sleeping, you might have problems eating. Um, these are all things, you know, let's, let's talk about what we can really do to take steps and be more resilient when we break up. So um, I return to the fire triangle. I always refer to this. This is my major tool for emotions. So obviously emotions are the fire in the middle. They're caused by three things. The combination of uh, what's going on with our physiology, our conditioning, and our language. And uh, feel free to check out any other videos I have. This explains it uh, more in depth. This is just a refresher, a quick refresher. So. Uh, and I give a trick for each side of the triangle so we can mitigate the emotions that are happening inside the triangle. So, um, physiology. Number one, we want to work with our body. So when people talk about self-love, this is kind of what they're talking about. You want to work with your body and not against it because not only then are you fighting the emotions of the, of a breakup, but then your, your body is, is kind of in this wrestling match with you, as opposed to you and your body working together to get through the breakup. So these are all, you know, so this is what I like to think of as self-love and just working with your body, making it a tool instead of an enemy during this process. So, and your body wants to digest and process this and adapt and move on. Your body wants to do that. And so helping it do that is how you help yourself through this breakup, through this withdrawal process, through the neurochemical reset that you're going through. And so um, obviously the good old fashioned advice that they have for all of us, you know, eating well, drinking enough water, getting enough rest, um, cutting out sugar, huge, like don't be hitting the brownies. I know you want to because that sugar gives us that 
artificial hit of those good neurochemicals, but oh man, it's also a toxin. So, you know, limiting your sugar, I found, and uh, I did some research into this, and from my own experience, I also know uh, exercising, really key, exercising naturally produces in, in the endorphins in your brain that you start to help yourself neurochemically reset. So exercise as much as you can. That is a great way to work with your body. And um, another one I found was also ear acupuncture. Uh, I am a fan of acupuncture. I think, again, it, it works with your body systems. It helps you process things, release things, balance balance all your internal stuff. And so they, there's been a lot of research with ear acupuncture, right? Your ear is a little microcosm of your whole body. Um, and so when they stick needles in certain points of your ear, it helps to balance. And they've had really good results with specifically helping people with addictions and withdrawal for ear acupuncture. So something else to consider, you want to work with your body. And another tool that I love to use um, is kind of some emotional first aid. So when an emotion, when you get something really, when you're going through a breakup, and you have these huge emotions coming up, put your hands on the area of your body where you feel the emotion. For me, a lot of the times, um, sadness is behind my heart. And so uh, wherever you feel it in your body, literally put pressure on that area. Put both hands on your body, put, apply pressure, just like if it was like a, a wound that was oozing blood, apply like a gentle pressure and then, you know, tell yourself, I got this, I got this. So you're crying and you're like, I got this, I got you, I got you. And, and this really is an advanced tool to help yourself. It's like emotional first aid, you know, the gentle pressure, the telling yourself, I got this and feeling the emotion, not resisting it, feeling it, experiencing it. Because when we repress stuff, we kind of like bottle it down and then we're going to have to deal with it later. So the faster, you know, it's like ripping a band-aid off. When you just, you sit there and you take it and you feel the feelings, you feel the emotions, it helps you process it and release it instead of repressing it and having to deal with it later. Cause, because, you know, when you don't do that, um, when you're just busy resisting it, it makes the process, it drags it out. So... There's some great tools for working with your body instead of against your body when you're going through a breakup. And if you find yourself like having these huge emotions for longer than like a month, if it starts to get into two, three, four, five months, you know, you're just like super depressed, you may have actually, and I know this for myself, developed an addiction to the sadness or the depression or the anger, like whatever you're experiencing, again, your brain is creating a neurochemical hit from that, that you are now using instead of that person. So you've like created a substitute addiction for yourself. So please, if you are, if like realize that if the process is taking super long to heal and get over this person, you may have inadvertently set yourself up for another addict, a replacement addiction. I know I did this. Oh my gosh. My major relationships, it took me years to get over. I would just became depressed and would just rock myself and feel sad. So realize that, you know, and use the same process, like work with your body, start doing modalities that help yourself eating, exercising, drinking enough water, acupuncture, meditation, you know, anything that helps you relieve stress. So realize if the process is taking a long time, you may have just substituted one addiction for another. Um, and so let's go back to our handy dandy graph. So our conditioning, um, remember that, uh, so let's say upgrade, not loss, right? Part of the reason we feel sad um, when we have a breakup is we're not really questioning our beliefs, thoughts, and conclusions about this person and about the relationship. Um, it's easy to, to feel like, okay, I'm going through a breakup. I need to feel sad, right? That's our social conditioning of, oh, this is what happens when I go through a breakup. I feel sad. I cry. I, and realize that there's so many other reactions you can have. And, and so opening yourself up to that and really getting honest about the relationship, like this is the time to look back and write down all the crappy stuff that you went through with this person, <laughs> like write it down when you're having a clear moment, like write the stuff down, like, 
you know, he or she did this to me and it really hurt me and I cried for several days or like make a huge list and you find when you do this, you like pour it out, put it on paper. And then when you're having these moments where you idealize the person, like you start to feel sad and you're like, oh, I miss this person so much. Go back to that list because it's also, it's almost like you're undoing the conditioning to idealize this person. You're undoing it and you're you're realizing like, whoa, I'm actually, like that relationship wasn't perfect and these are the things that I wanna do better next time. And so it's a self-regulation technique to write down the things you don't like about that person, that the bad stuff that happened, the stuff that you put up with that you didn't have to and refer to it when you are idealizing them so you can get some more clarity. Friends and family are also great for helping you with this. They are happy to remind you when you called them upset about this person. They're happy to be like, you know, you guys really didn't, you weren't like the perfect couple. Like, this is what I saw, you know, this is what, and so, you know, let them help you make this list because it's, it's also, you know, a great way. And then you can refer to it and then you don't have to call them again and be, and tell them the same sad story. You can refer to your list and help yourself undo the conditioning of thinking that this person was like the bee's knees because most likely, you know, there were some, there were some broken aspects of the relationship. There's some things that could have been a lot better. So, and number three, our language. So how can we, how can we go to language? We can change our story. We can change our story, our narrative about what we're going through. So instead of saying, I'm going through a breakup, I'm suffering without this person. I'll never feel this way again. This is all stuff, that actual thought, that story that you're telling yourself is what is causing you the emotional pain. If you change that, you you change your emotional reaction. And there's victimhood inherent in, inherent in saying all that stuff. So what I found, the mindset that really helped me, and I just went through a breakup last February um, for an, an eight year relationship with a narcissist. And I had tried to leave this person several times. And this was the narrative change that helped me. Okay. Are you ready for this? This is like, this is good stuff here. So my story that I changed was that I am upgrading my life right now. Instead of I'm going through a breakup or we broke up again, I am upgrading my life. So that eliminates a lot of emotional reactions come from a sense of loss, right? Anger, lashing out, we feel like we lost something. Sadness, we feel like we lost something. If you didn't lose anything, if you actually gained something and upgraded your life, there's no, the emotions then go away because you're like, wow, I am so much better off without this person. And so I challenged myself. I'm like, I'm going to make my life as awesome as possible. I am going to upgrade my emotional reactions, right? This being with this guy, I cried probably three to four times a week. I had an emotional meltdown three to four times a week. So I figured as long as I can do better than that, as long as I can get it down to like once a week, I've upgraded my life, right? I've upgraded. I have not lost anything. I've actually made things better by not being with this person. So that is... If you can frame it in terms of an upgrade and then take action to support that upgrade, right? Do the stuff this person never wanted to do with you. Go feel the way, find ways to feel the way that person never made you feel. Like if you didn't feel pretty with them or handsome, do something for yourself that makes you feel that. Like get a haircut, get a new outfit, like fulfilling that need for yourself. Whoa. Then you like take charge of your narrative and you're, cha you're upgrading and there's less and less of a sense of loss from breaking up with this person. So, and these, these three things like, holy cow, like this, again, I dropped, I, I got essentially got over a eight year relationship in a matter of a few weeks, you know, literally a day we broke up. I purged him from my system and I was like, spent some time healing for a couple of weeks. And then I was like, good to go. And in came, you know, my highly sensitive boyfriend that I have now that I am just blissfully happy with. So these are the things that, you know, work with your body. Remember that you're, this is an upgrade, not a loss. The more you can frame it that way, 
and believe it. This isn't just affirmations. You have to actually do actions to support that upgrade. Go make your life amazing. Like seriously, this works. This is, works so fast. And then change your story. Change your story. Remember that this person was human and write down the things that drove you crazy about him or her and refer to them back when you're having a moment of weakness. So, um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let me know. Drop a comment uh, below the video. And thanks for watching to the end. If you are a highly sensitive person who is suffering in a, in a breakup or in a relationship with someone that is toxic, um, I would love to help you. Reach out to me at emotionalfireacademy.com. I have some excellent, uh, I have a two hour live workshop and a emotional rewire program to help you be more resilient and gain emotional mastery as a highly sensitive person. So check those out and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Hot shots, go out and rock it. Bye.